for this week, you don't get the disembodied voice, you get Dr. Cho. Uh, a couple of people have asked me, what's this stuff in the background? Actually, along the top, those are my patents, and behind me are plaques um, from different awards and things I've gotten over my career. But anyway, today we're going to be talking about key success factors and competitive advantage. Now, before we move on to that, we need to talk a little bit about housekeeping. If you look at the syllabus, we were supposed to have a quiz this week. We're not going to have a quiz this week for the simple reason one of the questions on the quiz is on today's lecture. I didn't think it was really fair <laughs> that you get a quiz on something that you just learned the same day. Uh, and what I also decided to do is to give you flexibility. There's a one week open window for you to take the quiz. Once you start the quiz, you cannot stop. It's seven essay questions. 90 minutes to complete. Now, essay questions, I just mean short answer questions. Whatever you, it's open book, open notes, but you cannot use the internet. And so, you know, download all your stuff in one place or print it out or whatever. Um, the other thing I would say about this is don't cut and paste. If you cut and paste and I see it, uh, I, I'm going to flunk your, your quiz out, right? And you know, that's not a good thing. Uh, so uh, you're also signing a pledge on the quiz to say that you're doing your own original work. Uh, so this class is about strategic planning and management, and eventually we'll, we'll get to technology, uh, planning on starting to compress uh, after the break, compress a lot of these uh, uh, modules, because as you can see, they're really not that long and I'd start jumping into talking more about technology. Uh, the strategic management model. It's probably a good thing to know. Hint, hint. Uh, <laughs> and what makes this model strong is, first of all, there are a lot of loops in it. And the loops make sense because your strategy is not written in stone. You make adjustments, you make changes. The other thing about uh, this is that not only does it talk about tangible things like assets, but also human factors and that sort of thing. And so key success factor is one of the more abused uh, <coughs> excuse me, parameters. And for example, it's like, what is the key success factor for our company? We have good profits. Well, yeah. <laughs> no, but key success factors should be unique and they should be a driver f uh, that correlates directly to your competitive advantage. For example, First Solar, uh, the solar panel company, one of their key success factors is cost reduction. Then in order to be competitive with everything else and to make solar more acceptable, cost has to be good. For pharma business, risk management is a very big part as well as regulatory. That's part of uh, uh, risk management. And so that's what we mean by key success factor. And so we'll talk about some of the barriers involved that you set up for competitive advantage. And so what we're talking about today are key success factors, competitive advantage, clusters, barriers, and so, some examples. So what do we need for success? And there are two parts of it. One is how well do we serve our customers? Creating value, delivering value, supporting value. The thing about a lot of this business stuff is when you look at things they give you, and here's the list. For example, looking for a job. Everybody will, or even applying to grad school, everybody will say to you, oh, here's the top 100 questions that you, know, you need to know for an interview. But at the end of the day, you can distill those 100 questions into three categories. And this is what everybody wants to know when you're looking for a job. One, do you have the skills to do the job? Two, do you fit into our culture? Meaning, are you going to make a good teammate? Some characteristics of being a teammate are generic. Some aren't. An example is I applied for a job. And uh, it was for a vice presidency. And the CEO said to me, you know, what do you think your position means, being a vice president of engineering? And I said, I think this is a position of service. I believe we do not touch the customer. Technicians, salespeople, 
engineers, they come much co closer to the customer than we do. So our job is to make those people the best they possibly can be. By being the best possibly they can be, we return value. That value goes back to our shareholders. And so this is a position uh, which are, we are being honored with. And the CEO looked at me and he said, you'll never cut it here. <laughs> and he said, power isn't something that's given to you. Power is something you take. Your goal should be to take my job. And <clears throat> I, I sat there thinking, oh my God, I've stumbled into the Roman Empire. <laughs> so that's an example of culture. Do you fit into that? Uh, some cultures are very high paced, like if you go into the semiconductor business, it's a run business, meaning the moment you step into the office, you run. You're either, at, you're either doing something for someone or seeing other people, and all day long, there's no time for rest. You're just always busy. You just run. <clears throat> now, when you're young, that's great and exciting. When you're old, it's like, oh, I'm too old for this crap. Uh, anyway, the second part of it is competition. And how do you deal with competition? <laughs> how do you defend yourself against competition and uh, handling it? Now, uh, what is an industry? Well, the industry is basically a group of enterprises, and you're pretty much serving the customer in the same way that they look at you and value you in the same way. And a sustainable competitive advantage is basically you're exploiting something that you do, which differentiates you from everyone else, but also correlates to you returning greater value back due to that. Uh, some advantages like uh, first mover into the market, first entry, sometimes it's very successful, sometimes it's a failure. In technology, it tends not to be a success. And the reason why is the fast followers take advantage of your learning curve, learn everything you did, and they replace you. Uh, every high-tech product, the originator wasn't the one uh, who, had, who captured the long-term value. And I should know firsthand because that's what happened with my gyroscope. Uh, however, are there examples of success? Yes, Walmart. And what Walmart specifically did, and this was part of the strategy, which was brilliant, is they realized in cities that have 50 to 100,000 people, they both basically had a lot of mom and pop stores. But at that population size, they can only support one Walmart. They can't support a Walmart and a Target. So that's why Walmart built out so quickly in the South and expanded so rapidly, because they realized that they get there first. There's not room for two of them. Now, did Walmart get away from that strategy? Yes, and that's what happens to a lot of businesses. You have your initial strategic advantage. You take advantage of that strategic advantage, but guess what? You start to hit the walls of the box. That that market segment in space, you've pretty much wrung that orange as far as you can. So now what do you do? You go into other people's spaces. Look at Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines make fun of hubs. If you have a one to two hour flight, a hub makes absolutely no sense. They were right. But what happened when Southwest expanded to flying across the country? Gee, all of a sudden, they've got hubs. <laughs> and now they're going international. And so you see Southwest very carefully growing. <clears throat> and that's what Walmart's done. They've gone into bigger population centers. And so when we talk about competitive advantage, how valuable is it, how rare is it, and is it dis difficult or impossible to imitate? And so we'll talk more about this in the next video.